Hi, my name is Brad Neal with the University of Indianapolis, and we're going to go ahead and get started with today's lesson. So the reading assignment that we're going to be going over uh, in the video here is the 3.2 Determining Empirical and Molecular Formulas. It is this link uh, here that you should read before watching this video. Um, the video will be complementary to the material given to you in said reading. So um, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that the reading goes over is percent composition. It gives you this nice definition of percent composition being the percentage by mass of each element in the compound. Um, so one of the ways that we are going to write uh, what a chemical compound is to one another is the chemical formula. And most of the time, that's what we're going to do as chemists. We're going to say, this is what the chemical formula is, and it's that kind of uh, structure and writing that you've already been practicing with your chemical naming. Depending on the field that you're in, percent composition becomes more valuable. So there's this uh, technique called elemental analysis where um, you can actually get your sample analyzed and you will determine to a very high degree of accuracy and precision um, what the percent composition of your sample is. And from the percent composition, you can convert that back to a chemical formula or from a chemical formula, you can determine the percent composition. Um, the basics here are, um, or for this example that we've got here on the screen, this is assuming that your compound is a hydrocarbon. And a hydrocarbon is pretty much defined as a species, a chemical species that has only carbon atoms in it and hydrogen atoms in it. Um, you're typically gonna go over this kind of stuff in terms of naming and yada, yada, yada in organic chemistry. Um, but for these percent composition problems, hydrocarbons are really nice. So if our species only has hydrogen and carbon in it, the only things that we need to worry about are hydrogen and carbon for that percent composition. And so these equations that your textbook gives you right there, yeah, these things right here, that's going to be what you're going to use to determine what the percentage of hydrogen is in your sample for the percentage of carbon in your sample. Now let's say you had oxygen in there as well. Well, you would just set up a similar equation as you see above just for your oxygen and really any other element that may be present. So let's say you're not dealing with a hydrocarbon, you're dealing with something else. This is the general layout for any of those problems. So let's do an example here real quick of what is the percent composition of nickel in nickel chloride. So to help ourselves out, let's go ahead and let's get ourselves a nice little writing surface. So the problem is asking us, what's our nickel chloride composition? So this is requiring us to be able to take the name of the chemical um, and then turn it into a chemical formula. So nickel two, we've got that two plus charge there based off the Roman numerals and chloride because of where it is on the periodic table, we know it's got a negative one. So nickel chloride, nickel two chloride would have this chemical formula. Okay, now let's apply what we just discussed in the PowerPoint to this particular problem. We said that we could write out the formulas for anything else via the methodology laid out here above. So our percent nickel, as the question was asking us for, is going to equal the mass of nickel over the mass of compound. and then times 100. All right, cool, Yahtzee. If you go back to that problem though, you're gonna say, well, I, instructor, whatever, did not actually give a mass of any of these species, so how are we supposed to solve this problem? Well, this is when we're gonna go back to the material that we talked about in chapter two, where we've said that our relative or the 
amount of these individual atoms will stay constant no matter how big of the sample we've got. Um, so if we've got 44 grams of the sample, then we're going to have a proportionality of nickel to chloride that is the same as if we had 100 tons of nickel chloride. The proportionality would be the same. So an easy thing here to do for ourselves then is to just go ahead and let's give ourselves a known amount of material of the nickel chloride. And this is an assumption because of that definite proportions that we're gonna have, this is an assumption that's valid. So I would suggest then to give yourself, um, I would suggest to give yourself here a mass of your compound that equals one mole of your compound. The reason that I'm saying one mole of your compound, um, it kind of makes things easy because you're going to have to go to the periodic table anyways to do these problems. Um, so you may as well just start with one mole of your compound. And if you have one mole of your compound, what this will end up being, this equation up here, it will be able to work out to say if we have one, the mass of one mole of our compound, we're going to have the mass of one mole of nickel. So we can figure out what our molar mass of our nickel chloride is. So we said it was nickel and it was two chlorides. And so we can go to our periodic table here and we can say, well, we have two chlorides and periodic table time, Yahtzee. So the periodic table, just to make this a little bit bigger so that we can read it for chlorine is gonna be that 35.45. So 35.45, and specifically grams per mole. And I ran out of room there, but that's okay. And then the nickel is going to be the 58.69. So 58.69 grams per mole. We do some math, and we go to calculator view, which is this one. We do some math. And we can say our 58.69 plus our two times the 35.45 and then equals, and we get 129. So 100, 129.5. Uh, five, six, five, nine, five, nine grams per mole. This is specifically of our nickel chloride. So our percent nickel then, we can take the mass of one mole of our nickel because for every one nickel chloride over here, we have one nickel in it. So every one mole of nickel to chloride, we have one mole of nickel in it. So that one mole of nickel by definition is going to have the molar mass of 58.69 grams of nickel for every one mole of our compound, which we said was 129.59 grams per, oops, we're going to take away the grams per mole because while that is the definition, the definition of our equation is just the mass of our compound. So one mole of our compound will have a mass of 129.59 grams nickel chloride. And then we do our times 100. And we go back to calculator cam. And we type some stuff in. So our 58.69 divided by the 129. 0.59 and we hit enter and okay we didn't do the times 100 fine we'll do the times 100 enter and bada bing bada bing bada boom we get 45.289 so um 45 uh 45.289 there we go percent Valid question time, how many sig figs should we use? The problem itself did not give us 
any significant figures. So this would be a question then that I would allow you to have as many as are appropriate and an appropriate number would be the least amount of significant figures that were given to you by any of your compounds on the periodic table. So from our periodic table, everything had four sig figs. So really let's go ahead and let's just round this number to four sig figs. And so we've got 45.29% uh, nickel. And that is pretty much how you're gonna be able to do any percent composition problem. Um, it just comes down to those definitions and then making a right assumption, making a valid assumption when appropriate. Now we could have given ourselves any amount of our nickel because of that proportionality of how much nickel there is in nickel two chloride, we should always end up with this 45.29%. It's just easier if we give ourselves one mole of our compound to start out with, um, because then you're at a pretty simple ratio to go ahead and start with, because you know that the ratio between of nickel in nickel to chloride is well one nickel atom for every one nickel to chloride it just makes the math easier um, and that's pretty much it okay that is pretty much how you do mass percent composition mm, nope not mass percent that is how you pretty much do percent composition please let me know if you have any questions thanks